it may very well be that gynocentrism is the most powerful social force in our civilization in the sense that women being the limiting factor in reproduction creates a massively powerful concatenation of psychological incentives for people to act in certain ways that are generally more favorable towards women and less favorable towards men. And so I don't really have an issue making that claim that, yes, perhaps gynocentrism is the most powerful force in our society, social force, that is. But it's easy to make that claim and believe that, as a consequence, everything, quote-unquote, gynocentric would be all-encompassing, which is to say, if women want X, they're going to get X. And in many, many cases, that's true. We see it with women receiving lesser sentences compared to men after having committed identical crimes. We see it with more help in terms of desirability to be hired, affirmative action, allocation of medical monies, etc., etc. That's all true, undeniable. But I've come to believe that there is one force, perhaps, not definitely, perhaps more powerful than the general psychological trend of gynocentrism. And that force is the almighty dollar, greed, the bottom line. What do I mean by this? Well, some of you might know a website called Chatterbait. Chatterbait is effectively an interactive website where, in the large, vast majority of men, pay working girls, we'll call them that, on camera to do various things. And, of course, it's at the discretion of the working woman to act in certain ways and reveal certain things in exchange for money. It is, in some sense, a form of digital prostitution, I guess, but it's been around for quite some time. The primary competitor to Chatterbait is not some generic porn site, but probably Twitch. But officially on Twitch, there are limitations on what the women can say, show, and do. And these limitations do not exist on Chatterbait. All well and good, right? But very recently, there was a major disruptive force on Chatterbait. And the name of this disruptive force was Project Melody. Now, Project Melody is effectively a 3D animated avatar that is both manipulated by a real person, presumably a female, and also has a voice actress. And for some period of time, at least over a period of days and perhaps even now, Project Melody was outstripping, no pun intended, the other working females on Chatterbait and just making a lot more money, comparatively speaking. And this led to a lot of frustration and uproar on the part of the working women, the actual real women, competing with this virtual bot that was nonetheless powered by some real person, saying that they're not putting their neck out on the line. They're not going the full mile. They're not risking everything, including the reputation. And that all their hard work, as they put it, had been for naught because this digital virtual being powered by a human was somehow inauthentic, right? Well, it's interesting because nothing actually happened. Chatterbait, whoever rules Chatterbait, gave full permission to the person in question. And not only that, it was clear based on the response and the non-reactivity to these women complaining that the people running the show there, didn't care that it was not quote-unquote authentic cam work or that the woman in question was not putting her quote-unquote face out there. And so what does this tell you? This tells us that in many cases money, or the bottom line, is going to be more important than all the caterwauling of females out there, which is to say that they can complain about certain things, but if some strange animated avatar is making more money than they are for the site, well, why wouldn't the site support that? And so it's an interesting observation. We see it in very concrete terms manifest itself here. And it might portend something for the future. More broadly, it seems that the bottom line is the most powerful force 
out there in our society. People often talk about the disintegration of the family, but let's be honest, whether this was intentional or not, one thing that certainly benefited all sorts of manufacturers was the idea of the atomized individual. After all, you as one individual still need a pot, a pan, a plate, a set of utensils, rather than one shared between different family members or different people cohabitating. And so the more people are split up, the more profit there is to be gained. Now, I'm not making the claim here that this was all intentional and it was by design, merely that that's an opportunity right there. And it's entirely possible in the future that similar such developments might overtake the mating market, although a lot of that is in the realm of science fiction right now. But let's talk really about the qualities of this Project Melody and why men would go for it in the first place. Well, I've already discussed at length in the past why men oftentimes partake in these online interactive sessions. It's effectively to meet the virtual girlfriend need. It's something different than simply pure masturbation or getting your rocks off. It's an attempt to forge some kind of connection even if it's completely artificial. And let's be honest, an animated avatar has none of the blemishes of a real female or woman, is more willing to act and react in ways that are pleasing to the men, and is probably never going to complain about certain things because she's only at least in part, assuming the voice actress and the person controlling the avatar, a real person. So this, I think, is the real winner here in the sense that men tend to put up with things regarding women in order to get their intimacy or their sexual needs met, but it comes with a lot of baggage. But something like this VR female does not. Is it then any mystery that she's making more money for the site than the quote-unquote real women workers are? And let's make a futuristic jump here, because I think this is far, far, far away in the future. I'll be dead by then. But with notions of perfect AI and, and what have you, I could imagine a world where the bottom line continues to rule. And despite people's best attempts, their political attempts, at trying to stop the introduction and the emergence of female robots with perfect AI, I think it probably is likely to happen regardless, for the simple reason that it seems undeniable at this stage that some subset of the male population is willing to shell out tons and tons of money for this sort of thing. And if they're willing to do that, in all likelihood, they're willing to go an even extra mile to shell out money for other things. And people talk about critical mass for movements or whatever. But there's also probably a critical mass of acceptability in terms of what is considered socially acceptable and what not. At this current point in time, things like sex robots and anime avatars are not considered socially acceptable by broad society. But as more and more men will be gravitating to these sorts of things, because on balance they might be more preferable compared to real women, I think there's going to be more and more acceptance. And it might even be the case that women don't complain since they only want the top 20 and 10% of men regardless. And those are also not the type of men on average who tend to gravitate to these sorts of things. So it's a pretty interesting phenomenon. And it speaks volumes to the fact that even with a force as powerful as gynocentrism, if the money is great enough, people will even overturn the complaining of women, and this was a great example of this. And finally, we should never underestimate the fact that most relationships between men and women really come down to putting up with certain psychological qualities and forms of behavior in exchange for access to reproduction and access to sex. Now, barring the reproductive aspect or the direct sexual aspect, I think this sort of thing will definitely become much more frequent in the future, whatever form it takes, and it could ultimately be some form of game changer when the technology is sufficiently sophisticated and they can actually satisfy some of the more complex desires of men. 
anyway, I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. And if I'm still alive, I'll check you out later. And as always, may the gods watch over you. Bye-bye. If you liked this video, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you enjoy my content, please consider making a donation or becoming a patron. Thanks for watching.